happy draft day everybody we have finally made it what a ride it's been to finally get to this day a day that we all share a day we all enjoy and a day we all love man i could not be more pumped up for today and in today's video specifically i'm very excited to give you guys my full first round mock draft this is the first time i'm going to be doing this where i'm going to take you guys through every single one of my picks and explain to you guys why i would do this and why it makes a ton of sense uh, without further ado let's just jump right into this man and let's get into the first pick because the first pick might be the easiest pick i've ever had to make and uh you know if you don't think trevor lawrence is gonna be the number one player you need to rethink it man trevor lawrence is the number one quarterback i've ever seen as a pro ready prospect since andrew luck that is the type of hype trevor lawrence has had ever since he came in his freshman year in in, in which he led that offense and that was a great offense that he led uh, with some ballers on that team uh, he's kind of been consistent throughout college and i know he's never really had that one year where he threw for four to five thousand yards like joe burrow or matt jones has but he's always been consistent he's always played within the scheme uh, on top of that the jacksonville jaguars they really don't need anything else right quarterback is the position that's holding that team back you look at some of those running backs that they have on the roster, including James Robinson and Carlos Hyde. You look at the weapons that this team has built, uh, Marvin Jones, Philip Dorsett, DJ Shark, uh, among others, LaVisca Chanel, who I think is going to be a fantastic football player as well. You look at that defense. This team doesn't need a whole lot. Trevor Lawrence is the number one overall pick in this draft class and you know 99.9% .9 of us is uh, is gonna get this pick right let's jump forward and here's the thing right uh, a lot of people have the New York Jets taking Zach Wilson I don't see that happening uh, Justin Fields who is my number one quarterback in this class is going to be the number two overall pick the Ohio State quarterback in my opinion has been a great throughout his whole entire college career a lot of people talk about how justin fields transferred from georgia to ohio state because he couldn't you know quote unquote win the job at georgia justin fields is a special talent and the jets have an offense that in my personal opinion is among one of the best offenses in the league uh, from the perspective of, of playmakers right they don't have everything uh, on the defense side of the ball even though i love some of the players that they do have on the defensive side uh carl lawson quinn and williams right quinn and williams is probably the second best defensive lineman in the whole entire nfl the jets are not missing a ton and when you bring in someone like justin fields and you give him players like tevin coleman Corey davis who is a great player in my opinion Jameson Crowder, Denzel Mims, who really hasn't unlocked his full potential yet. You give Justin Fields that type of talent and they're going to be a playoff team. Don't be surprised when the Jets are making a push for the Super Bowl with Justin Fields at the helm. Uh, and Quentin Williams is disrupting and destroying every single offensive lineman in his path. Quentin Williams is the next Aaron Donald. And in my opinion, Justin Fields is the next Deshaun Watson. Number two, New York Jets take Justin Fields. Now, the San Francisco 49ers also need a quarterback. And a lot of people have thrown Mac Jones as the possible player that they're going to take. I say no. Once Justin Fields is off the board, I think Zach Wilson ends up being the default pick for the San Francisco 49ers. We all know the Niners traded up from uh, pick 11 or 12. Uh, they traded up and they wanted to... Uh, get the guy that's going to replace Jimmy Garoppolo. A lot of a lot of people have been talking about how Jimmy Garoppolo would be traded, if not traded, possibly cut. Right, the Niners could save thirty million dollars by getting rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, and I think it would be wise for the Niners to move on from him. Obviously, they traded up this high. They're not going to take Kyle Pitts. They're not going to take an offensive tackle. They're going to get a quarterback, and they're going to get their future quarterback. The Niners' defense is still that Super Bowl defense right that defense that took them to the super bowl the only thing the niners are missing is a a quarterback to to lead that offense when you have kyle shanahan running an offense you know that most quarterbacks will succeed and zach wilson makes a ton of sense he had a great career at byu 
with the first three picks out of the way let's jump forward and this is where it really gets interesting that is with the atlanta falcons let's discuss this i believe the atlanta falcons are going to take wide receiver jamar chase from lsu jamar chase opted out of, of the 2020 season but most people would agree he was better than justin jefferson who just had a phenomenal rookie season uh, when you put the tape on of jamar johnson you know that this guy is going to be a superstar player at the next level jamar chase lsu atlanta falcons let's discuss why it makes sense a lot of people will say well you already have julio jones you already have calvin ridley so why would you need another wide receiver uh, julio jones one is up there in age uh calvin ridley is is a top tier wide receiver and to be honest this team is ready to make a super bowl push as well they're not that far away uh, I, I think a new coaching staff is going to have a huge, huge, huge beneficial uh, aspect to, for this team. You look at Jamar Chase, you look at Calvin Ridley, you look at Julio Jones. How do you defend that? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers just won a Super Bowl with having a great, great offensive uh, weapons and playmakers around their quarterback. And I know the Falcons defense is not there yet, but the Falcons do have some good uh, defensive players as well uh, on top of that people are going to say why not take an offensive tackle why not protect matt ryan uh, and and to those people i say this matt ryan in my opinion is a quarterback that gets the ball out quickly uh, on top of that you have two good offense tackles already with the falcons uh, you look at jake matthews who was a first round pick caleb mcgarry who was also a first round pick even though i don't think the falcons were the ones that drafted him uh, you have two guys who in total gave up i think six sacks last year combined between both of those tackles you don't need panesu right you don't need you know you don't have an offense tackle that's 33 years old and that's coming to an end of his career Jake Matthews is 29 years old. He's in his prime. The Falcons don't have a need at tackle. They don't have a ton of needs. I would say that one position they could upgrade at is free safety. They did sign Eric Harris. And in my opinion, I, I, I'm a Raider fan, so I've watched Eric Harris enough to know that uh, he is not a true full-time starting safety. He's a great rotational player. He'll come in. He'll make plays. Uh, right now, the Falcons do have a need at, at, at safety. But is the safety worth the fourth overall pick? I don't think so. I don't think Trayvon Merrick, who is my number one safety, is worth that fourth overall pick. Uh, Jamar Chase makes too much sense. Let's move forward and get into the Cincinnati Bengals. And this one is an easy pick, man. Panay Sewell is the guy. Now, let's, let's discuss this a little bit, man. The Cincinnati Bengals, in my opinion, did right by taking Joe Burrow. And, and I know most people right now will say Justin Herbert's the better quarterback. Uh, it doesn't matter about who the better quarterback is right because you can be the first best quarterback in the nfl that doesn't mean the second best can't win uh, depending on the roster put around him the second best quarterback can beat the first best quarterback right it doesn't matter about having the best quarterback it's about having the best roster around that quarterback uh, joe burrow i think is a great player and the thing that the cincinnati Bengals have to do is they have to protect him and i know they went out and got riley reef from the vikings but riley reef is also 32 years old so if if reef is going to be that that stop gap offensive tackle that's short term right that's not long term uh, on top of that they did get jonah williams a couple years ago from alabama and i love jonah williams um, I've watched some of his tape right before I did this draft, and I have no doubt in my mind that Jonah Williams will be the, the Cincinnati Bengals' long-term answer at tackle, right tackle or left tackle. Uh, either way, Panay Sewell comes in day one. Uh, he's most likely the starter right away if you really wanted Riley Reef to, to start because he's, you know, maybe he's ready and Panay Sewell isn't. That's fine, but at the same time, Panay Sewell is going to be all pro superstar his potentials through the roof the cincinnati Bengals would be wise to protect joe burrow so joe burrow can get his playmakers the ball uh, joe mixon t higgins tyler boyd probably the most underrated wide receiver in the nfl uh, the cincinnati Bengals don't have a ton of needs offense tackle i think just makes sense with that let's get forward and get into the sixth overall pick the miami dolphins take none other than my number one playmaker in all of college football that is my man kyle pitts i think kyle pitts is going to be a special player in the nfl uh, here's the thing though right the dolphins already have mike jessicky they already have uh preston williams Devontae parker 
a Will Fuller who is suspended for two, uh, I think two or four games. Um, but at the same time, Kyle Pitts, you don't have to put him at tight end. You can put him in at wide receiver, line him, him up in the slot. Uh, but at the same time, you can also play dual tight end with Gesicki and, and uh, Kyle Pitts, right? You can keep both of those guys in on the field at the same time. When you look at Alabama and how they let Tua Tungvaloa have the most success, they often protect in him, right? Either one tight end with a running back to protect him, uh, and they got the ball out fast to those playmakers. So with having Pitts and Mike Jages Gesicki together at the same time on the field, uh, I think it only makes sense that you can not only protect Tua, but you can have Parker on the outside and, and Preston Williams on the outside beating their guys. Um, and, and again, you know, at this point, does it make sense to take a defensive player? I don't think so, man. That secondary is solid. Xavier Howard, uh, you got Eric Rowe, uh, Byron Jones, Raquan Davis is a player that I absolutely love. Christian Wilkerson's another defensive tackle that they got. The Dolphins don't have a whole lot of leans, man. And Brian Flores has this team going well. Uh, you could make the argument that Dolphins could possibly take an offensive tackle. Uh, but I think they're fine on the O-line. I think if they build that those weapons and they give uh, two of the weapons, that, that's going to allow Tua to succeed. Uh, sixth overall pick, Miami Dolphins, Kyle Pitts. Book it right now. Number seven and a lot of people are saying no defensive linemen or no defensive players in the top 10. I think Michael Parsons is the only guy worthy of that top 10 pick from the defensive side of the ball. Michael Parsons is a game changer. If somehow Michael Parsons slips, and I know everybody's been uh, trying to talk it into existence that he has some sort of character issues. I'm not worried about those character issues. At no point has he been arrested. At no point has he been charged with the crime. Uh, at no point has he even gotten into an altercation on the field or with his coaching staff. There's nothing else there. Michael Parsons is going to be the best linebacker in the NFL when we look back in three to four to five years. Michael Parsons is a game changer. And let's talk about why it makes sense for the Detroit Lions to go uh, to the defensive side of the ball here. First and foremost, uh, the Detroit Lions already have a, a couple of, of wide receivers. Uh, they got Tyra Williams. They have Rashad Perryman. Uh, TJ Hawkinson's a great tight end, in my opinion. And tight ends take a little bit longer to develop. They have good offensive tackles, right? At least Tyro Crosby, in my opinion, is a great offense tackle. And if he's not there today, he'll, he'll get there. I loved when he was coming out of Oregon. Um, right tackle, he's the guy. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, they have some good players, man. They brought in Michael Brockers. They have Trey Flowers, Jamie Collins, Jeff Okuda. You put in a guy like Michael Parsons, and it only makes that offense that much better. Uh, and at the same time, I, I know the Detroit Lions, some people say they might take a quarterback. I say they should wait on taking a quarterback at least for one to two seasons to see what Jared Goff can do. I'm a huge fan of Matthew Stafford, but Matthew Stafford does do something that people don't think about. And that's he doesn't allow the running game to uh, to be what it what it could possibly be. And that's the thing, right? The Detroit Lions have built a good running game, right? Good linemen, great running backs, at least two or three great running backs on that roster. And basically what Matt Stafford does is when he hands the ball off, maybe he doesn't carry the fake out the way Jared Goff would, right? Maybe he doesn't uh, make the correct adjustments the way Jared Goff would. And I'm not saying Jared Goff's a better passer than Matt Stafford. Obviously, he's not. Uh, but Jared Goff does do a little things a little bit differently. Uh, he's a little bit more conservative. And I think sometimes being a little bit more conservative can win you games, right? Um, and again, Matthew Stafford's a fantastic quarterback, but I think the Detroit Lions were smart to move on take Jared Goff and, and get some extra picks, man, and, and really rebuild the roster. I think this team would make sense to start building from the defense and then make their way to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, number seven, Detroit Lions take the best defensive player in this draft, Michael Parsons. Number eight is the Carolina Panthers, and the Panthers take offensive tackle Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. Rashawn Slater in my personal opinion, could be the number one offense tackle from this class. Unfortunately for him, he's only 6'3", and as you guys know, I mean, 6'3 is tall, right? Don't get me wrong, but uh, as an offensive tackle, it's not tall enough. Some, you know, teams have issues with an offensive tackle who is 6'3". Um, but at the same time, if, if you look at the Carolina Panthers, and they just traded away Ted, Teddy Bridgewater, some people would say that means that you know they want a, a quarterback, but that's not true, right? The Carolina Panthers already have Sam Darnold. 
I'm sold that Sam Darnold with a competent roster, a competent team, they can do a ton of good things. And I think this pick for them, it just makes sense, man. You look at the weapons they have. Christian McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, David Moore. Um, you know, you allow your quarterback, Sam Darnold, to be protected, make his reads and get the ball out. That's going to give him the most chances to succeed. Now, some people would say maybe a corner at this pick. And I wouldn't be mad if they wanted to take a player like Patrick Sertan uh, to go with players like Brian Burns and Shaq Thompson and Derek Brown. Uh, the Panthers are build some, building something special. This just happens to make sense in my personal opinion. Number eight, Rashawn Slater. Let's move forward to number nine. The Denver Broncos, even though they just got the quarterback from the Carolina Panthers, the Denver Broncos go ahead and get their future quarterback in Mac Jones. Now, some people are going to say, well, Mac Jones will probably end up going uh, two or three. I don't think so. I don't think Mac Jones, you know, goes that high. Uh, again, you know, Josh Allen went a little bit later on in the draft. Right? I think he was the ninth overall pick or, or maybe he was the eighth overall pick. Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, right, a little bit later on. Quarterbacks don't have to go top five, right? Sometimes teams will wait it out and see what kind of falls to them. I think the Broncos waited it out, and I know they just got Teddy Bridgewater, but if Drew Locke's right here, Teddy Bridgewater is about right there, right? That's really not going to get you to compete for a Super Bowl. Matt Jones' potential is up here somewhere, right? So I believe it makes sense that the Denver Broncos take Mac Jones. They have a great core of wide receivers with Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Noah Fent. Uh, they have a couple other good wide receivers as well. Uh, offensive line, they've been building for a couple of seasons now. And it only makes sense that if the Denver Broncos get their quarterback of the future, they can win some games, man. Uh, let's jump forward and let's get into uh, the, the 10th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and that is Patrick Sertan, cornerback from Alabama. The Dallas Cowboys have a pretty good offense right like you can make the argument that the cowboys with dak prescott healthy are a top six offense in the league right they have three real good wide receivers i would say two great wide receivers in amari cooper and cd lamb another pretty good wide receiver in michael gallup uh, they have uh, a good tight end they have a, a really good running back they have a pretty good o-line still even though it's not the same o-line uh, from three or four years ago it's still a good o-line uh, and i think the, the difference on that offense from three years ago is Dak Prescott's a much better quarterback today than he was a couple seasons back. The thing the Dallas Cowboys are missing is someone on that defense to make plays. And it's not their front seven. Their front seven's loaded, man. Demarcus Lawrence, Randy Gregory, Jalen Smith, Lander Vander Esch. Um, even Navelle Gallimann uh, from Oklahoma is a great football player. Uh, you give them a quarter cornerback in Patrick Sertan to go with Diggs, who was also with Alabama. And you, you know, you pair those guys back up and, and you have something special. Number 10, the Dallas Cowboys take Patrick Sertan. Moving forward to pick 11, the New York Jets. I'm sorry, the New York Giants take Devontae Smith, wide receiver from Alabama. Now, let's discuss this, man. Uh, because some people will say, does it make sense that one, Devontae Smith falls that far? Two, do the Giants need a wide receiver, right? Like they already have Galladay or they just picked up Galladay. And I say yes. First of all, the, the first receiver that went in last year's draft class, Henry Ruggs went with the 12th overall pick. Then you got Jerry Judy to go a couple picks later and CD Lamb to go pick 17. It, it wouldn't surprise me if receivers don't go in the top 10 or as many receivers as people think. This year, I think maybe four wide receivers go in the first round. Uh, Devontae Smith, I think, does end up falling a little bit, not because he's not a good player, but just because teams need other positions more. Quarterbacks, tackles, those are the positions that win you football games. Uh, and teams need those positions a lot more this year than they do need wide receivers. Plus, the wide receiving class is deep, and I think teams kind of understand that. Uh, with that being stated, uh, Devontae Smith for the New York Giants, you pair him up with Kenny Gall Galladay, uh, Sterling Shepard, Darius, uh, Darius Slayton, and of course, the best running back in the NFL, Saquon Barkley, man. Um, you throw in Devontae Smith and you're giving Daniel Jones a great group of talent. And here's the thing, if Daniel Jones can't get it done this season with that much talent, then you know that Daniel Jones is not the guy. I personally love Daniel Jones, man. I, I was very, very excited when they picked him sixth overall pick a few seasons back. 
Uh, I think Daniel Jones can be one of those guys that just has it. I think he could be one of those guys that, uh, you know, kind of like Eli Manning, uh, Peyton Manning, right? He's just a great passer of the ball. He makes plays. He knows how to move in the pocket. Uh, I I'm sold, man, on Daniel Jones, but he needs to prove it this year to be able to continue having those chances, right? But at the same time, the Giants need to build him the offense and this is the year that they started to do it with Kenny Gall Galladay and I think they build upon that in the draft with that being stated let's jump forward to pick 12 the Philadelphia Eagles who traded back obviously they knew that they were not going to take a quarterback they were committing to Jalen Hurts uh, what do the Eagles need they need a corner man I think the Eagles have have done a great job so far I, I think they have Darius uh, Slay who's a great corner uh, but they can get another corner, and that's J.C. Horn. And, um, you know, don't quote me, but I think J.C. Horn is Brett Coleman's number one corner in this class. And that means a ton, man. Brett Coleman knows what he's talking about, and he's very high on J.C. Horn. I watched Horn, and everything he does from his hips, his fluidity, the way he tracks the ball in the air, the guy's going to be a special player, in my personal opinion. And I would love for the Philadelphia Eagles to take the South Carolina cornerback pick 13 the la chargers uh christian derisaw virginia tech i think makes a ton of sense the chargers aren't missing a ton right you look at their quarterback justin herbert who is one of the best young quarterbacks in the nfl you look at that defense with with derwin james to uh, joey boza uh, they did i mean they didn't necessarily lose melvin ingram because he's still a free agent um but you know that defense is not a bad defense right they they've been known to replace their players and just continue having success right assuming a good defensive coach can can really put it together this pick only makes sense uh when you consider how great of a roster they have but they do need to protect justin herbert uh you know at the end of the day christian jurassaw is pro ready he is my number three offensive tackle right now and i think teams value him just a little bit higher than they value tevin jenkins just because he has more potential uh with that let's jump forward and get into pick 14 uh, because that is when my fourth offensive tackle is going to end up going 14 top 14 picks four offensive tackles the Vikings get Tevin Jenkins offensive tackle from Oklahoma State um, here's the thing right I thought to myself okay uh, the Vikings just lost Riley Reef, who I like as an offensive tackle uh, but they do have a couple of options right uh, Brian O'Neill could play left tackle Ezra Cleveland who plays guard for the uh, Vikings could possibly also play left tackle uh, I love uh, Ezra Cleveland when he was in college he was one of my top tackles uh, obviously most people saw him as a guard but he could play tackle at the same time uh, I, I, you know if the Vikings wanted to really build that O-line you leave Cleveland at guard and you put Tevin Jenkins either right or left tackle he can do both as as Brian O'Neill could do both uh, Brian O'Neill is already a top tier tackle in the league right and he's only going to get better uh, you put in Tevin Jenkins in that Vikings offensive line, and that offensive line is going to be nasty. Like, they're going to be an offensive line that you're not going to want to mess with, right? Uh, you give me Tevin Jenkins if, if you know, I'm on the Minnesota Vikings, and you will see how much better everybody gets, right? You already have Justin Jefferson. You already have uh, Thielen. You have a good quarterback in, in Kirk Cousins, who I think can get it done. You have a good defense right and you started rebuilding that defense uh, and you bring in an offense tackle you have a great o-line that to a young great o-line you're set for a number of years man the o-line is a way to win and uh, with that let's jump forward man let's get into pick 15 and here's the thing right uh this pick right here i think makes so much sense for the new england patriots christian barmore defensive tackle from alabama and let's discuss this man a lot of people will say, why the hell would the Patriots take Christian Farm? If you think about the Patriots and how they've built their teams in the past versus how they built their teams more recently, uh, in the past, they were, you know, top three or four defenses. Um, and let Tom, Bla Tom Brady played a conservative game and let's make the Super Bowl year after year by allowing Tom Brady to be conservative. As Tom Brady got older, he got better. He stopped being as conservative and they started throwing the ball more. And they started building that defense for guys that can make plays, that can cause turnovers. Uh, because as a defense, you can give up 400 yards. But if you have two turnovers or a, I should say, a plus two turnover differential, you're going to win the game. And that's what the Patriots would do to win. 
The Patriots today have built their roster the way they were built maybe 15 years ago. And that's by having a conservative offense, a ton of playmakers around a, a average quarterback. Um, and what they've done is on the defense side of the ball, they've gotten some some players back, right? Kyle Van Noy, Dante Hightower, who had uh, opted out last year. JC Jackson, Gilmore are great corners. You got McCordy, Kyle Duggar. They brought in Matt Judon. Uh, who better to be right in the middle of the defense than Christian Barmore? Christian Barmore could be Vince Wilfork for Bill Belichick. Christian Barmore can take on double teams. He can rush the passer at will. And I know he's not Vince Wilfork, right? But I think his potential could be Vince Wilfork. I think he's strong. He's big. He's lengthy. He's tall. Uh, Christian Barmore, in my opinion, is one of the best defensive players coming out of this class. Uh, he'd be my number two overall defensive player right after Michael Parsons. Uh, and I think the New England Patriots would be wise to take Christian Barmore. Uh, the New England Patriots are going to be in the Super Bowl in the next few seasons, just solely based off of how they built that roster. Uh, let's jump forward and get into pick 16. Uh, and that's the Arizona Cardinals, man. You know, the Cardinals are legitly one of the best rosters in the league, man. You, uh, you've done so much to rebuild, and there's not a ton that this team needs, man. I, I would have possibly given them a center, uh, but they went and got Rodney Hudson, who is a great center. Uh, I would have possibly given them um uh, someone else like a, a tackle potentially here and they could still go tackle i wouldn't be mad at that pick uh but you know what patrick peterson did leave they did bring in malcolm butler but i think that's a short-term contract one or two years uh caleb fairly makes a ton of sense man he did opt out and didn't play in 2020 he is one of the top tier corners in this draft and i think it makes a ton of sense for this team to get that guy that could be their future and Caleb Fairley just makes a ton of sense, man. And the Cardinals don't need a ton on defense. Like, Fairley's not going to be asked to be the number one defensive player. When you have Isaiah Simmons, when you have uh, J.J. Watt, you have Chandler Jones, you have so many other pieces. You have probably, you know, one of the uh, best safeties in the league in Buda Baker. Caleb Fairley, he's just another, pet, uh, just another chess piece in that defense. And I think it makes sense. This gives the Cardinals the edge over every other team in that division. 16, Caleb Fairley, Virginia Tech corner for the Cardinals. It makes sense. And with pick 17 and possibly the one pick that can turn the Las Vegas Raiders into a Super Bowl contending defense, that is Trayvon Merrick TCU. And let's discuss this, man. The Raiders have a top 10 offense. They've had that for the last two years. Or I think two years ago, they were a, the 12th best. Last year, they are the 10th best offense. The Raiders can score points, right? And yes, they lost Nelson Aguilar, but at the same time, how much of a big deal is that, right? Uh, that production will go to Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs. At the same time, losing a player like, um, uh, like Nelson Aguilar, it's not that big of a deal because you're a good offense the year before and you didn't have Aguilar. Uh, at the same time, Ruggs, Edwards get older, Runfro gets older, Waller gets another year in the system, Josh Jacobs, Kenyon and Drake. The offense is not going to miss a beat. That offense is going to continue to go. But what the Raiders need is they need to fix the defense and they need to give Gus Bradley, the new defensive coach, they need to give him his guys. They need to allow him to build how he wants to build. He's always had a great free safety or a great strong safety. And the Raiders already have a great strong safety in Jonathan Abram. Jonathan Abram is a box safety that's going to be able to help defend the run. What they need is they need a guy like Earl Thomas that can play 15, 20 yards deep as that uh, single high post safety. Trayvon Merrick makes way too much sense for the Raiders. And if Trayvon Merrick is there with pick 17, they need to take him because this guy is going to be a difference maker. He's a special prospect. He's a special player. Uh, and he has all pro written all over him. Uh, with that being said, let's jump forward and get into pick 18. And that is the Miami Dolphins. Uh, the Miami Dolphins, again, have a great roster, right? Uh, earlier, we had the Dolphins uh, going, going ahead and, and taking a, a tight end in Kyle Pitts. But they do have some question marks on the offensive line, right? I don't know if if they have everybody they need on the offensive line. Uh, after Isaiah Wilson filled with the Titans, the Dolphins went and tried to get him. That didn't work out. 
But when you go out and try to get him, you're basically saying we need an offensive tackle. And that's why we're going out and, and, and trading for Isaiah Wilson. Uh, obviously, that didn't work out. They cut him shortly after. Uh, but they do have Austin Jackson at left tackle, one of my favorite offensive linemen coming out last year in the draft. Um, Elijah Vera Tucker, if you guys don't know, played right next to Austin Jackson, right? Um, and I think that could be a natural fit. But at the same time, Elijah Vera Tucker could also play offensive tackle. So if the Dolphins need a true right tackle, Elijah Vera Tucker can do that. At the same time, if you want, uh, if you know, if, if you want Robert Hunt at right guard, you want Solomon Kinley at left guard, you can do that and put Tucker at right tackle. And of course, Austin Jackson at left tackle. Uh, Jesse Davis, I'm not sold on, so I don't think he's your guys' future right tackle. Uh, I think the Dolphins need to go ahead and shore up that offensive line. You got yourself some great playmakers. You got Kyle Pitts with your first pick. Um, it only makes sense to go out and, and get yourselves that future offensive lineman, that versatile offensive lineman. Let's jump forward to pick 19. That is the Washington football team. With pick 19, I think the Washington football team takes a quarterback. The Washington football team is the most complete team in the whole entire NFL right after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Look, if Tom Brady went to the Washington football team last year, they would have been competing for a Super Bowl. Flat out, that's how great of a team that is. Like the Washington football team made it to the playoffs and they gave the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the hardest time in the playoffs um, among all the other teams that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just kind of ran over. And that's because they have built their team correctly. You look at that D-line, you look at those linebackers, that secondary, uh, the O-line, the playmakers, everything's there. The only thing they're missing is a quarterback. Now, here's the thing. Uh, they, of course, brought in Ryan Fitzpatrick. And I think Fitzpatrick makes that team uh, a, a playoff contending, Super Bowl contending team. But he's not the future. And, and I think that's the one thing that this team needs to consider. If Trey Lance is there with pick 19, you take him. Now, here's the thing. I could also see a scenario where Washington trades up to take Trey Lance. I think that might be a more realistic option. Either way, I think Trey Lance goes to... Uh, Washington, and I think he's going to have a great career in Washington. Uh, I don't think him being a uh, small school guy makes any difference. Him playing one game this past season does not make any difference for me. He's a good football player uh, with a complete roster around him. I think this makes a ton of sense. Uh, pick 20, and this is where things started getting interesting, man, because uh, defensive ends are a weak class, in my personal opinion. But the Ch Chicago Bears could use a defensive end like the bears don't really need anything you know other than a defensive end right like robert quinn is a good player but at the same time does it make sense for them to uh, continue getting two sacks out of robert quinn as he did in 15 games last year i don't think so man you get jalen phillips to go along with Khalil Mack on the other side, and you have two good defensive ends. You still have Akeem Hicks. You still have uh, Roquan Smith, who's a fantastic linebacker. You have some good secondary pieces. The offense is not that bad, man. Uh, once you guys get your quarterback, which I do think you guys currently have on your roster, uh, you have two potential quarterbacks. Uh, I think the Bears can, can make a playoff push. And again, I think defensive end, uh, continuing to keep that defense top tier should be a top priority for the Chicago Bears. With that being said, Jalen Phillips, my number one defensive end. Let's jump forward and get, in, get into the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Corner is one of those positions that always go no matter what in the NFL draft. You'll get five or six in the first round because it's such an important position. And you need at least three to four good corners to be able to play rather as dime or quarters, right? You need a ton of secondary players. Uh, Greg Newsom is ranked as a top tier corner. Some people have him as high as their number two corner. I like him. And I think for the Indianapolis Colts, when you have the defense you already have with Darius Leonard, uh, you have uh, two other good young rookie linebackers, DeForest Buckner. You have a good roster in general. And of course, you bring in a quarterback that could possibly win you a Super Bowl, right? I think it makes a ton of sense for the Indianapolis Colts to go out, get that corner, and really just allow that defense to continue to build. It only makes sense for them to go get a, a corner like Greg Newsome. I think the fit is there. With that being said, let's jump forward to pick 22, which is the Tennessee Titans. And this guy is maybe my number one overall offensive lineman, and that's Landon Dickerson, center slash guard from Alabama. 
let's discuss this uh, detailed, right? Let, let's get into this. Uh, the Tennessee Titans are a very good roster right overall you look at that roster and they're not missing a, a ton on that roster uh from the defensive side of the ball specifically you have jeffrey simmons danico autry harold landry who i still think has so much upside rashawn evans you just bring in bud dupree jay and brown's a pretty good linebacker as well in the secondary you have christian fulton amani hooker janarius uh, Ke uh jenkins uh kevin byron byron you have a lot of good players right so it's not like your defense is lacking on the offensive side of the ball, I'm not sure if you guys have your future guard. Uh, and I think that's where Landon Dickerson can come in. He can play guard. If you really need it to him, he can play right tackle. Uh, if Dickerson's healthy, Dickerson is the number one offensive lineman in the class by far. I think he's better than Panay Sewell. And the biggest question mark is, is he healthy? And that's what people will continuously ask. Is he healthy? And if he is, take him. If he's not he could be a second or, or potentially even third round pick. It's going to come down to his injury history because if you look at the film, the film speaks for itself. Landon Dickerson dominates everybody, man. He makes any single player look bad, man. And, and that's the type of player he is. With that being stated, let's jump forward to the New York Jets. And I have the Jets taking my number three linebacker. That's Jeremiah Ousu cormier um, and, and here's the thing, right? The Jets have a ton of good players already, right? Like, uh, outside a quarterback, they're pretty much set. And they're going to get their quarterback, right? It's just whoever it is that they, they prefer. Their own offense is set once they get that quarterback. On the defense side of the ball, Quinton Williams, second best defensive tackle, a top tier uh, pass rusher, right? You don't have that. You get you got about three or four pass rushing defensive tackles. Quinton Williams is that right uh, but what the the jets could use is they can use a versatile linebacker like Owusu cormier now look they already have cj mosley who is the, an inside linebacker blake cashman who i absolutely loved just a few years ago coming out of college um and i, I know they did get gerard but uh gerard davis but gerard davis is a bust he didn't work out the lines for a reason uh you know i i think the the jets don't have a ton of needs right maybe they, they go with the secondary player uh, but even then, their secondary is not bad. And I think Cormier could play a lot of slot as well. He's 215 pounds, so he's not a true linebacker, right? Especially not a true inside linebacker. He'll be playing a lot of outside linebacker, a lot of slot. Uh, maybe, you know, some strong safety in the box type. Uh, you know, maybe cover the flats um, or, or, or the curl flats. Uh, I think Jeremiah Wilson Cormier makes sense here. And I did say he's my number three linebacker. Uh, we'll get into my number two linebacker in just a second when he gets chosen. Uh, but pick 24 with the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think the Steelers are going to take Xavion Collins. And let's discuss this. The Steelers just got rid of Bud Dupree. And I want to say they got rid of him because they wanted him back. They went hard at trying to get Bud Dupree back from what I hear. Uh, so with that, you know that your young defensive and I should say out to the linebacker, Alec Highsmith, who was a third round pick. I don't think he's the guy because you wouldn't have went so hard after Bud Dupree. You wouldn't have tried to bring him back. I think Alex Highsmith is a rotational player. With that, Xavier Collins is 270 pounds. He's a true 3-4 outside linebacker. He can rush the quarterback. He can drop back in coverage. The Pittsburgh Steelers are built on their defense. They want to continue having su success. You to replace a, a guy like Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree, in my opinion, is one of those guys that he's a very tough player to replace. But you still have a ton of good talent, man. Uh, T TJ Watts, one of the best defensive ends. Uh, you have a bunch of good linebackers, Devin Bush, uh, Vince Williams, um, not to mention some of the interior defensive guys. Uh, you know, the Steelers are a 3 4, a, a base 3 4 defense. Xavier Collins is a three down player. The Steelers would be wise to bring a guy in like that it's a great fit in my personal opinion with that let's jump forward to pick 25 and that is the uh, jacksonville jaguars who i think need a safety and jamar johnson is my number two safety and i know some people might say why would the jacksonville jaguars take a player who's going to be there in the second or third round it doesn't work like that man the saints took marcus davenport when people said he's a second round pick the raiders took damon arnett when people said he was a second round pick uh, oftentimes what people say on Twitter is not what GMs and scouts think. And Jamar Johnson is one of those guys that's ranked really, really high in the scouting community. 
Uh, people loved the fact that he went from corner and converted to safety. Um, and, and keeping in mind, Indiana had a top 10, or it's actually top five defense last year in college football. They gave it to Justin Fields, man. And Jamar Johnson picked Fields off twice. I love Jamar Johnson. Uh, and again, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they don't have a ton of needs, man. You get a quarterback and that offense, it's going. That's going to be a real good offense once you put a good quarterback uh, in that offense. Um, not saying Gardner Minshew's a bad quarterback, but you know he's not Trevor Lawrence or he's not one of these top tier quarterbacks that are coming out. He was more of a, a gap uh, player, right? Uh, but again, the Jacksonville Jaguars, man, you got Joe Colin as your defense coach. You know he loves his secondary players. You give him that versatility to go with C.J. Henderson and Shaquille Griffin. Again, Jamar Johnson can play post single high safety. He can play slot corner. I think he brings a lot of versatility. I think and I've heard from the scouting community that Jamar Johnson is a first round pick. So I'm going to put him in uh, to a team that I think has a need at safety. With that being said, I earlier I just mentioned how Jeremiah Usukormia was my third linebacker. My number two linebacker goes to the Cleveland Browns. And that is Jamin Davis, linebacker from Kentucky. Here's the thing, right? Uh, there's a difference between playing inside linebacker and there's a difference of playing outside linebacker. Uh, when a team is going to play quarters coverage, which is most of the time three defensive uh, defensive linemen with uh, seven secondary guys and one linebacker, uh, is Jeremiah Wolves or Cormier going to be that one linebacker? I don't think so. Is Jamin Davis going to be that one linebacker? Absolutely. So for me, when I look at inside linebackers, uh, when I look at guys that could be versatile, Jamin Davis and Micah Parsons can both cover slot receivers. Maybe not shut them down, but you know, if, if they were put into a situation where um, maybe the offense just comes up with this random play that you've never seen and Jamin Davis is stuck guarding uh, a slot wide receiver, uh, he can do it for one play for that defense to come back on the next play and make that adjustment so it doesn't happen again. At the same time, if uh, offense stretches you out and, you know, Owusu Cormier is the only linebacker on the field and then they bring a running back back in and they hand it off, can Cormier at 215 pounds take on a, a Rodney Hudson or a Landon Dickerson? I don't think so. I don't think he is that type of guy that will go head to head with one of these guys and, and be able to take them on uh jamin davis the cleveland browns makes a ton of sense uh the browns have two great running backs they have two great wide receivers they have good o-line jadavin Clowney uh just signed miles garrett is a top tier defenseman uh, i think it only makes sense that they go out and get a linebacker to be able to fit that system you know they do have uh, a couple of good linebackers already but i think jamin davis just makes sense uh, he replaces Joe Schobert, who I think the Browns have kind of missed. Uh, the Browns are going to be playing the Chiefs, the Ravens. They're going to be playing these teams in the playoffs, right? Because that's what the Cleveland Browns are, are going to be, right? And they need guys that can cover. With that being said, we're going to jump forward to the Baltimore Ravens. And uh, if you guys haven't noticed, I haven't had a third wide receiver be taken off the board yet. Jalen Waddle is still on the board. And I think the Baltimore Ravens go ahead and snatch him up with 27. I believe that Jalen Waddle is getting too much hype, and I do think he's still a very talented player. Don't be surprised if he goes to the to the Raiders with pick 17. Uh, but I do think that Jalen Waddle is getting a little bit more hype than he deserves. And I, I do think wide receivers in general are deep, but they're not so deep that you can't get a guy in the second round and have that same production uh, as a guy who goes in the top 15, right? I think Devontae Smith and Jamar Chase are top 15 picks. I don't know if J uh, Jalen Waddle is a top 15 pick. I don't think Jalen Waddle is a better receiver than Kevin Jenkins or Panay Sewell or Rashawn Slater are at, at being an offense tackle. I don't think Waddle is a better uh, receiver than is Jamin Davis or Owusu Cormier or Michael Parsons or Patrick Sertan are at their respective positions. Uh, with that, I do think Jalen Waddle falls a little bit. And the Baltimore Ravens make a lot of sense, man. Uh, the Ravens need guys that can catch the ball and make plays, you know, three, four, five yard catches and take it to the house. And in my personal opinion, I think Jalen Waddle makes a ton of sense for the Ravens to go with Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews. They have a great offensive line already. Um, and, you know, some people will say, well, why not take an offensive tackle right now when you 
don't really have that guy right uh, at the end of the day they did trade away orlando brown jr but the ravens are known as that team to replace talent uh and not reach but know exactly who to take at what position that's why they're always picking at the bottom of the draft year after year after year after year it's a well-run organization jalen waddle makes sense um and with them taking the third best wide receiver right before the 28th pick which is the new orleans saints i think the saints take the fourth best wide receiver and that's elijah moore wide receiver of Ole miss um, i think elijah moore has so much skill from the wide receiver position and i think he's often underrated you know you ask someone who's your top three wide receivers they'll say chase smith and waddle in whatever order then you ask who's your fourth fifth and sixth wide receiver no one knows who the hell it is but number four elijah moore uh is my number four wide receiver i think he's gonna be a great player and the saints need to give Jameis Winston uh, more weapons not that they don't have uh, you know some good weapons in Latavius Murray Alvin Kamara Michael Thomas but I don't think Traquan Smith is the future guy or Marquez Calloway um, and again I know the Saints are loaded on offense and they have a great coach that is going to continue to uh, get that talent uh, but why not take a guy like Elijah Moore who you can get for five years on a rookie deal if you take him in the first round with that being said, let's jump forward. You got the Green Bay Packers, and the Packers are one of those teams that they don't need a ton, man. Like, they have a pretty good defense. They have a pretty good offense. Uh, they do play a base 3-4, and I don't know if they have their true middle linebacker. And I, I think Nick Bolton is a game-changing linebacker. Uh, my comp of Nick Bolton is Darius Leonard. I think Nick Bolton's going to be a superstar player. Um, this gives them an impact starter next to Chris Barnes. And I think Chris Barnes is a great talent as well. Uh, Nick Bolton is my pick for the Green Bay Packers. Let's move forward to pick 30. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, man, it's crazy because a lot of these teams at the bottom of the draft don't have needs, man. That's obviously why they're picking at the bottom of the draft. The Buffalo Bills should take Samuel Cosby, my number five offense tackle in this class, uh, because why not? Why not protect Josh Allen? Uh, you have to protect your investment. Um, I, I know that the bills do have two two offense tackles but De uh deon dawkins in my opinion is not a starting left tackle i think just last year he gave up six sacks and he also had like four or five penalties uh you know six sacks is too much for a guy who's in his fourth year you know if he's in his first year and he gives up six sacks okay i can see that being the case but if you're giving up six sacks i'm not sold man and i know they just signed dura williams uh, dura williams could play left or right tackle uh, same with Samuel Cosme. Samuel Cosme can play left or right tackle. I think Cosme does need to develop just a little bit, uh, but he is ready to start day one. Samuel Cosme is going to be a very good tackle for the long run. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, number 30, Samuel Cosme is the guy. Pick 31. Uh, we just talked about it. The Ravens don't reach, but they know who they want. And I think Dylan Radunes from North Dakota State is a fan fantastic football player the ravens need to get themselves a right tackle uh Daly, dylan radunes is that guy man i know they can go out and and get a player like alejandro villanova from the steelers who's a free agent um but at the same time if you have two first round picks the guy that you traded away and got that first round pick for why not replace him with with the pick right uh, dylan radunes makes sense in my personal opinion and this just it is what it is right the ravens know how to fit players within the system this is a great fit in my personal opinion the final pick and the the one the one team that literally doesn't need anyone right uh, the tampa bay buccaneers would pick 32 don't need a ton but i think one position they can absolutely get and this is more of maybe they develop a guy uh, to eventually replace but at the same time it's a guy that has potential to be an instant upgrade uh tyson campbell cornerback from georgia when you put the film on it does not lie right uh, your mom might lie to you your kids might lie to you your significant other might lie to you but film does not lie and Tyson Campbell is my number two cornerback in this class. And I know he's not going to go as high as the second overall cornerback. Uh, but I think the guy is a game changer. And if teams don't take him, if they take Greg Newsom, if they take uh, Fairley or, or one of these other guys over Tyson Campbell, I think they're going to make a mistake. And I think they're going to regret it. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers will get a guy that's going to be a future all pro corner in Tyson Campbell. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I plan to go live later on. So if you guys are watching up to this point, make sure to tune in. Uh, we'll be doing a live reaction to the draft. I know a lot of channels will be as well doing a live reaction, uh, but it'll be interesting. It'll be very fun. I'm excited. Uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. Enjoy the draft. Enjoy, you know, if you're having a draft party or whatever, be safe. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these 32 picks at the same time make sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and i'll see you guys next time with another video